we have the marriage of quite literally first century or earlier beliefs, literally Iron Age philosophy with 21st century destructive technology. This, this on its face should, be, should seem untenable to us. Every person in this room has more access to information and scientific knowledge and, and just what is now basic common sense than the authors of the Bible and the Quran. In fact, there's not a person in this room who has ever met a person whose worldview is so is as narrow just by, by the sheer time in which they appeared in history as the worldviews of Abraham or Moses or Jesus or Muhammad. And until we grapple with that fact and honestly talk about the, the, the honestly commit ourselves to a 21st century conversation about the possibilities of human well-being, we're just going to be at sea and we're going to be trying to, we're going to be trying to figure out whether we should pass laws about gay marriage and whether we should ban blasphemy to the UN and whether we should allow newspapers to print cartoons about the Prophet Muhammad. And we're going to just be bewildered by the, the relentless certainties of people who are obviously lying to themselves. The fact that you have Christians having deep experiences of peace, and you have Muslims, and you have atheists, and you have Buddhists, it proves that there's a deeper principle that should be talked about in a non-sectarian way that is not held hostage by Iron Age, Age literature. The first thing you want to do in the spirit of intellectual honesty is admit ignorance, not claim that you, by closing your eyes, can realize your identity with the entire cosmos and, and you, the origin of the, you can go get before the Big Bang with your, your, your unguarded intuitions. A belief in God is not only unnecessary for a universal morality, it's, 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 it is itself a source of moral blindness. People want to be happy. They know the difference between happiness and suffering. They want, to, they, they want to feel a part of a community. They want to feel the best they've ever felt and, the be, and better, than, better than they've ever felt. And they, they constantly notice that life makes that difficult. So the beliefs that console us about what happens after death are a, a, a obviously a response to that circumstance. And one thing people have found to do is tell each other a story that death is an illusion that we all get together at the right hand of Jesus after we die. That, that does the trick for a lot of people, and people are mightily attached to that story. And, and, but that story is really, both, both it's in its products and in, and in the way of getting there, the antithesis of the scientific frame of mind. And we just can't conflate them. We have to notice when we're lying to ourselves and when we're lying to our children. And we have to notice that there's a liability to pretending to know things we don't know. Nine million children die every year before they reach the age of five. Think of, think of the parents of these children. Think of the fact that, that most of these men and women believe in God and are praying at this moment for their children to be spared. And their prayers will not be answered. Any God who would allow children by the millions to suffer and die in this way, and their parents to grieve in this way, either can do nothing to help them or doesn't care to. He is therefore either impotent or evil. And this is what it is to be clouded by bias. This is why we have phrases like wishful thinking and, and self-deception. To really believe that there is a God is also to believe that you stand in some relation to his existence such that if he didn't exist, you wouldn't believe in him. How does the supposed usefulness of religion fit into this scheme? It doesn't. Religion and science both make claims about the way the world is. They make incompatible claims about the same reality, and they make these claims based on very different standards of evidence and modes of argument. It should be quite clear that there's a, a conflict, a perfect conflict between demanding good evidence for what you believe and being satisfied with bad evidence or no evidence. 
So religion and science are in conflict because there's no way to disentangle religious and scientific truth claims.